Hey, what's up, guys? Collector John here. Uh, we are under a winter weather advisory here in Milwaukee. Uh, there's a ton of snow coming down outside. It looks like it might be about 6 to 10 inches today. Um, so it's a great day to just stay inside, chill out. I got my cat sleeping off to the side. Uh, he's looking super cute. And uh, play some PS2 games with you guys. I bought this new PS2 yesterday over at uh, Mega Media Exchange. My PS2 Slim that I've had for a really long time, it actually died. Well, it didn't die, but it stopped reading uh, DVD-based games. So it'll, it'll still read uh, PS1 games and like the, the CD-based PS2 games with the blue uh, surface on the bottom. It'll read those, but it's not reading any DVD-based games anymore. I might be able to fix it or do something else with that PS2, but in the meantime, I found this uh, fat model at Mega Media Exchange for 50 bucks, and I was like, well, $50 is like, you know, that's not gonna hurt anyone for a new PS2. I can I can afford that, that's a pretty good price. So uh, I ended up picking it up, and I've never, um, I've never owned one of these uh, fat models before. I've always had the slim, and you know, I love the slim, I love the form factor of it, I love how small it is, but I also think uh, this thing's really cool. I mean, it's, uh, it's big and beefy. It kind of reminds me of the original Xbox, just in how how much space it takes up. But um, I like that you can uh, display it vertically. I really like the PS2 text on the front here. I think that looks really cool. And uh, yeah, this is just a really cool looking console. I like having it around and I'm excited to use it. So uh, I thought we'd just chill out and play a few games on it today. That's, that's kind of what I'm in the mood for. But first things first, I'm uh, actually feeling a little hungry, so I'm gonna make lunch really quick. Uh, I'm going to go on an archaeological dig through my PS2 collection and pick up a few games that um, I'm interested in checking out today. And then we're going to come back here and check them out. So let's do that. Oh yeah, baby. Well, that was delicious. And now I'm following it up with some tea. And uh, as you can see, it is uh, really starting to come down out there. Yeah, it seems like the perfect time to head on back to the studio. No, no, we're not doing the explosions this time. This is a relaxing video. So uh, we're just going to head back. And, uh, pretend that didn't happen. Alright, so I grabbed a couple games for us to check out. And I thought, because it's a snow day, we will start off with the classic Sled Storm. Is this a classic? I don't know. It's it's pretty fun. I've, I've played it with my girlfriend um, in, like, multiplayer. I've never really done any of the single player. I don't know if it has, like, a... I'm sure it has, like, some kind of career mode. So we'll check that out and see what it's all about. But, uh... Yeah, nice snowy game to check out on our snow day. Let's pop her in. It's been kind of a while since I played this. Uh, I think it has some licensed music in it, so we might need to turn it down or skip some yeah. cutscenes. Oh god. <laughs> Okay, we're skipping that. I think there's a licensed song in that uh, intro video, so we have to skip that, unfortunately. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, we got a single player mode, um, championship, uh, single player event that allows you to earn new sleds. That sounds pretty good. It sounds like something we might want to try. Um, yeah, let's try that. Let's try the championship mode, see what's up. We got Zoe Payne, Sam Griffin, Niklaus Erickson. Okay, looks like we only have a couple players unlocked here. Uh, we got Tracy, TJ, and Zoe. So, well, it's going to have to be between Tracy and Zoe for me, but uh, I think we'll go with Zoe Payne, because I like her name. She's like a Max Payne. All right, and yeah, as you can see, I don't really have any sleds unlocked, so that's... Uh, that's what this mode is for, I guess, unlocking the sleds. But we got the Bone Buster, so we'll go with that. Um, and we'll do Cedar Canyon, I guess. That looks fine. Ah, that's good tea. Got some oolong today. Very tasty. It's a beautiful crystal clear morning in Cedar Canyon. I sat down on the track for a closer look. Yeah, so, <laughs> oh man, excuse me. <clears throat> the whole attitude of this game is so funny. 
it has these two commentators that are just like the, the biggest idiots uh, you'll ever hear in any video game. Uh, it's great. So, okay. We want to hit objects and do tricks. We want to use the storm boost. Um, yeah, okay, whatever. To advance, you must place third or better. Earn 2,000 points to unlock the hometown favorite, Sam Griffin. Okay, so we're shooting for third place. We'll see if we can get that. All right, let's go. Um, I remember the courses in this game being just totally insane and maybe a little bit difficult to navigate, actually, because there, there's just, like, so much going on. It's kind of like sensory overload on these tracks. Um, but that's kind of part of the fun, you know? It's got this... Uh, you know, that early 2000s attitude that we all know and love from a, from an EA big game. And yeah, I could say I'm definitely feeling the snow vibes. I'm getting some snowy vibes off this game, and uh, I like that, because uh, that's what we're going for today. I, I don't have a ton of other, like, snowy games to play. For my PS2, so this is just the one that I picked that I thought would be fun to uh, to fit that theme. But the other games will just be like normal games, but still fun, you know, still fun to check them out. All right, I'm in first place. I would say I'm doing quite well so far. If I can stay on the track, uh oh, oh, that's the break. Whoops. Uh, I want to figure out how to do some tricks. I'm not totally sure to do that. Um, okay, that was a trick. So, see, I think L2 and R2 might be doing some trick stuff. Um, I could look at the manual and find out, but who wants to, who wants to do that? R1 and L1 do kind of a drift thing, so that's super helpful. Alright, so we finished the first lap, and I'm still in first, which is good. So we can get a trick going here. Oh, okay. Did that again. <laughs> we did the no-hander. I got a few points for that, which is cool. Yeah, if this game had, like, an actual licensed soundtrack for the gameplay, I I'm pretty sure this isn't licensed music. It kind of just sounds like... Um, you know, some generic techno that they put on it. Um, I mean, I like it. It's it's not bad. It's just, if it had, like, you know, some actual big artists on the soundtrack, uh, that'd be really cool um, for, you know, the style of game that this is. I feel like that would work really well. And now I'm trying to think of, like, what would I put on this soundtrack if, if I were if I were the music supervisor for Sledstorm. Who would I put on here? Uh, probably some pr uh, Prodigy. Uh, some, some Chemical Brothers, that's that, yeah, Chemical Brothers for sure. Uh, Daft Punk, you know, if you could afford them, get some Daft Punk on here, that'd be sick. Uh, yeah, I'm just demolishing the competition here. Uh, final lap, we've been in first place for most of the race now. Um, so that's great. Oh yeah. Oh no, oh no, I spoke too soon. Okay, no, we're good, we're good. We're good. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, this game, uh, it's not bad at all. It controls pretty well. Um, like I said, it can get a little crazy at times just because of, like, I, I think it's a lot harder in split screen, which is mostly what I've played it in, but sometimes the camera angles just make it really hard to navigate these crazy turns and stuff, and it can be a little overwhelming and difficult to control. Um, but I think overall, it's like it's pretty fun and it controls pretty well, especially if you're just playing uh, in single player mode, where it's a little bit easier to tell what's going on because you have the whole screen. Um, and it runs at a decent frame rate, and you know the action feels snappy and smooth. So, yeah, I think I think Sledstorm for the PS2 is a is a pretty fun game. Um, you know, not an expensive title to own. So if you're like if you're into something like this and you see it at a game store. Um, I think it's definitely worth picking up. I think it's fun. You'll have to do better than that. I got first place, dude. 
Oh, but it's the points. I, oh man, okay. I did that all wrong. I was just focusing on getting first, but I need to, <laughs> I gotta get more points. No, that's fine. Um, let's try a new track. We'll go to Bermudaburg, see what that's all about. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed if it's uh, coming in on the microphone, but um, this PS2, it, it overall, it works very well. It has been making some weird noises with the disk drive, um, like kind of a, um, I don't want to say grinding. It, it is kind of a grinding noise, um, but it's like kind of a clicky, um, weird grinding noise. And I, I don't think it's anything to worry about. I'm pretty sure it's just the uh, the rails and the worm gear and the disk drive need to be lubricated, um, which is very easy to do, and I'm going to do it. Um, and I think that'll that'll fix that noise. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, otherwise, this has been a really good PS2. It also seems to read games a lot better than my old PS2 Slim, um, which doesn't surprise me because the freaking laser in that thing died anyway. But yeah, a couple games that I... A couple PS2 games that just never worked on that Slim uh, do actually work in this thing, so that's great. Uh, but anyway, we got another race to do here, so let's go. Here we go! Woohoo! Oh boy. Okay, I really... Oh, shoot. I really need to focus on getting more points. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to read the manual quick and try to get a better handle on how this game works. Okay, so you can do tricks with triangle. You can do tricks with the uh, L1, and <coughs> L1 and R1 when you're up in the air, and L2 and R2. Okay, well that R1 didn't seem to do anything there, but that's fine. I wanna see what triangle does. Oh, okay. I need to get more air. Where are the big jumps? What are we doing here? I also remember I said I need to crash into objects to get points. Okay, so if we run into these stupid icicles, we'll get more points. All right. See, my problem with games like this, and uh, I, I think like SSX is pretty similar, um, is that when I'm when I'm racing, I'm not focusing on getting points. I'm just focusing on racing, and and then if I'm playing something like Tony Hawk, then I'm focused on doing cool tricks. You know, I'm not really used to this kind of like in between style of game where you want to do both. Um, but I think you know, I think it's an interesting concept for sure, and I think this game seems cool. I'm just not good at the like trying to do tricks while racing kind of thing, but. Uh, we'll see what we can do here. It looks like I already have more points than I got last time, because uh, I'm just hitting a bunch of stuff, so that's cool. And my storm meter's filling up, so we can do this. Super speed. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Big jump. Big jump. Oh, yeah. I didn't even get that many points for that. That's okay. See the no the like the tricks that I'm doing they're just not really getting me that many points, uh, which is kind of a bummer. And I'm like hitting triangle and stuff, but that's not doing any tricks. I don't know. Oh shoot! Oh boy! And now I'm just losing. I'm super losing now. I feel like if you could uh, like grind your snowmobile, that would be sick. If they had rails that you could grind the snowmobile on, I'd be way into that. But, uh, yeah. I don't know if that might be in here. I, I don't think it is. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, boy. We're just... We're going all over the place. We're losing. We're losing bad. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I can say pretty confidently that I'm, I'm not good at this game. <laughs> but that's okay, you know. It is what it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. That was a big one. Okay, so if you hit uh, L2 and R2 at the same time, uh, that, that trick got me a lot of points. So I'm just going to do that from now on. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> it's, it seems like it takes a long time to wind up and wind down on that trick. So got to be careful with it. 
And yeah, this visual effect when you use the boost, um, I don't know if you can really see it coming across on camera, but you know, it gets really blurry like that. <laughs> and it's really hard to see <laughs> when, when you're doing that, man. It's really tough. Okay, yeah, it's, I can't do that. I can't do that trick unless I have a ton of airtime. Here we go. There we go. Okay, back on. I got 755 points. What the heck? Oh, shoot. Oh, I'm going off. I'm going off. I'm going off. Can we go this way? Oh. Where am I? I don't know what's going on. This is definitely not my best uh, my best gaming performance, that's for sure. I'd say this is pretty weak. Oh! But, uh, you know, we're just chilling. We're not, uh, you know, we're not trying to be super good at these games. We're just trying to chill out and have some fun. And you know what? I hope, uh, here's the thing. Uh, it's good to play your video games. <laughs> It, that's why I'm making this video, because it's it's good to just, like, sit down and relax and, like, play some of those games that, you know, we spend so much time and effort collecting. It's really important to just remember to do that. And, uh, coll like, collecting is super fun. Like, don't get me wrong, I love just going out and hunting for games. There's a thrill to it. Um, it's just a really, really fun hobby. But, um, you know, play. I think playing games, that's just as fun. I feel like I'm split pr pretty even between like playing new games that come out and playing old retro stuff that I collect. Um, it might, you know, lean a little bit towards new games still. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really fun to just sit down on a Saturday like today when I got nothing else going on and just mess around with some games that I haven't really put a lot of time into, you know? Just, you don't, you know, you don't need to commit to anything. You don't need to play them to completion unless you really want to. Um, you just kind of mess around with them for like an hour or two, you know? Just kind of kind of get a feel for them, get a vibe. And uh, that's super fun. I, I love it. It's, it's a great time. And you guys can let me know in the comments. Do you try to complete every game that you start? Or do you just kind of mess around with stuff? Or do you do, you do a little bit of both? Me personally, I do a little bit of both. Um, I think newer games, I'm a little more inclined to play those all the way through. And then older games, I'm more inclined to just kind of like, what I'm doing now, just kind of, you know, play each, play a few of them for like 30 minutes or an hour, maybe two hours, and just have a good time. But yeah, what do, what do you guys do? What's your, uh, what are your gaming habits when it comes to like retro games or new games? Um, what are you guys all about? Let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm interested to hear what other people do. And, uh, I'm in first place now, somehow. Well, I was for a second. Um, I'm still not doing a good job. I, I just, I did that trick again and do, uh, fell off my thing again because I, I don't learn anything ever. Oh God. Oh yeah. And now I'm in last place again. That's, uh, so it goes. So it goes. All right, we're getting back up in here. We're we're back up with the pack. We're in third place. Let's see if we can pa uh, pass anyone else here. We're coming up on this. Oh, now we're we're losing we're losing speed again here. Come on now, come on now. Here we go. Okay, would you guys rather be friends with a one of these characters from Sledstorm? Or Bam Margera. Let me know in the comments uh, who who you'd rather be friends with. I think I I think Zoe Payne. She seems all right. I'd, I'd be her friend. Not in a weird way. It's just like you know, we'd just be chilling. We'd be homies. You know what I mean? Okay. Um... I think we're getting to the end here. This uh, this course was very similar to the other one that I played. Um, they they there's not really much to differentiate them. Uh, this one maybe has less uh, like neon signs. I don't know. They both look the same <laughs> to me. But uh, yeah, it's cool. I, I bet there are other kind of environments to race through that look uh, maybe look a little more interesting. And I'd like to see them, but 
Um, I'm, I'm stuck in this hole. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible at this game. I'm never going to unlock anything. I'm, I'm useless at Sledstorm. I got sixth place, baby. All right. I think that's enough Sledstorm. We'll, uh, we'll play something else here for a little bit. How about we play some Champions Return to Arms? Uh, this is a game that I picked up in one of my thrifting videos a while ago. I got it for $4 at Goodwill. It's like a $40 or $50 game. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'll link the video above if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, I haven't gotten around to playing this one until uh, last night, and I thought uh, it was really fun. So we're going to check out some more Champions Return to Arms. Uh, nice complete copy. Got my memory card in there for some reason. Um, super clean disc. Very nice disc. So yeah, let's pop this thing in. Um, this game takes place in the EverQuest universe. So if you're familiar with EverQuest, uh, obviously it hasn't been around for a while, but that was like one of the... Um, I'm not going to say it was the first MMO, but it was definitely one of the first ones to become extremely popular before WoW came out and just totally destroyed everyone else. Um, yeah. Uh, I've never really played EverQuest. I didn't really have high-speed internet growing up, so just never really had a chance. Um, in this game, it's not anything like, uh, you know, the original EverQuest on PC. It's more of a kind of um, consoleized version of Diablo is what I would say. And there are a few other games like this, like uh, Champions of Norath, is that what it's called? Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games, that, those were like that. Dungeons and Dragons Heroes, that's another one. There are kind of a lot of games like this. And uh, I think all of them are, are really fun. I think they hold up pretty well. I'm not sure where like this one would rank for most people on that hierarchy of just kind of Diablo-like games that came out on sixth gen consoles. Um, but I think it's fun, so yeah. All right, here we are. I'm playing as a uh, cat person. I don't know if you can... There's my character. I'm a, I'm a weird uh, striped kitty cat with armor and a mace. And yeah, so you know, you can see here it has this very Diablo-esque inventory system. And I like that you can just move the cursor around with the, the analog stick. Um, that's kind of a minor thing, but it's just, you know, I, I prefer that over um, just, you know, going across each item and selecting them that way. Um, yeah, here's all my armor stuff. I also like the artwork for all of these different armor pieces. I think that stuff looks really cool. Um, yeah, and it's got kind of a, a stats and ability-based level-up system here. So I've leveled up a couple things, but I only have unlocked one ability so far, which is Roar, uh, which does 32 to 48 damage within a radius of 6 feet. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, let's... Uh, this is kind of the hub area. Um, all right, here we go. We're going through this portal, I guess. See so yeah, how we have a uh, uh, assortment of enemies here that are all attacking me. I'm losing a lot of health very quickly. Um, but you can press R2 to use a potion, and I have five of them left, so that should be okay. Um, yeah, so a lot of this game, it's just kind of running around and killing stuff and taking loot. Uh, much like you would do in a Diablo game or one of those other uh, Diablo-like console games that I mentioned before. Um, it's a Diablo-like, you know, it's a, it's a loot game. Uh, there's still plenty of games being made that are, that are like that, um, whether they're... I feel like that genre has kind of gone over to... Uh, shooters now, so you see a lot of loot-based games and stuff like Destiny or, you know, The Division or Vermintide, you know, stuff like that. Um, and this is just kind of a different version of that style of game that you can play on your PS2, and it's pretty fun. Um, would I pay 40 or $50 for a copy of this game? Um, I personally wouldn't, um, but, you know, that's, that's all very subjective. Um, if you really like these types of games or you, you're interested in collecting them, then yeah, certainly, uh, 40 or $50 could be worth it. Um, if you're more of a casual collector who's, you know, never played this game and isn't super interested, uh, probably not. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's like a must play. Um, I feel like you could just go play, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Heroes, which I think is a lot cheaper than this game, or, uh you know, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Those are also a little pricey, but not they're not that terrible. Um, this one is pricier than all of those, though, and I 
I don't think it's like um, because it's like a better game <laughs> or anything like that. Like oftentimes, uh, retro game pricing has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of the game. Sometimes it does, but um, yeah. And you know, this this is certainly not a bad game. I think it's really fun. I you know I'm really glad that I got got it for four dollars. Um, but no, I, I wouldn't pay I wouldn't pay market price for this personally. Oh, I started on fire. I do think this game looks really nice. Um, it's probably not coming across super well on camera, but just like, oh yeah, also you can play from this perspective, which is cool. Um, but like the textures on the ground look really good. I know that's like kind of a weird thing to call out and be like, oh yeah, this is awesome. But it's just something I noticed when I started playing. I was like, wow, the, uh, the ground textures are very high quality for a PS2 game. Um, it looks really nice. And then I think just overall the, uh, the art direction of the levels is pretty good. Um, I like the character designs. Like, this tiger guy looks cool. Um, but, you know, overall it is, like, pretty generic uh, high fantasy fare. Um, it's it's nothing that's going to, like, knock your socks off. But I do think it looks really nice for what it is. And uh, I'd say it's, like, fairly challenging as well. Um like, I'm very early in the game, and I've had points where, like, I thought I was maybe going to die. <laughs> um, and I'm sure it gets more difficult, you know, so. Um, yeah, so you get swarmed by enemies like this pretty easily. Um, I need to be using my special ability more. That's what I need to be doing, but, uh, yeah. Um, also, it has this mini-map on the side, which is great. So you can change the size of it by clicking the right thumbstick. And that's another thing that's extremely uh, Diablo-esque. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like that the map is a, is a thing you can do. Um, having a good map is always a, a good way to go. You know what I mean? Um, you can ignite barrels in the environment like this. Blow them up. So that's cool. Um, I don't know where to go. So that's my problem that I'm having right now that I don't know where to go. But uh, we're just going to run around until something happens, I guess. All right, yeah, I got to this level. I remember it being very dark, so... <laughs> um, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, you do. I do have a ranged weapon, so if I hit L1, I can switch to my throwing axes, which uh, obviously those are for ranged attack, which is cool. All right, let's use my roar. There's the roar. You saw it. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm super going to die. Okay, cool. Yeah, those guys are pretty tough. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this game, uh, it's cool. We're going to switch to something else just because I don't think it's like, you know, super interesting to talk about. Um, but I'll probably play more of it on my own. I think it's I think it's pretty fun for uh, for what it is. So yeah, that's uh, that's Champions Return to Arms. Pretty cool game. Here's one that I've had for a while and I've been wanting to uh, mess with it a little more. Uh, Smuggler's Run. This is a classic uh, Rockstar title. I, I'm pretty sure this one came out before Grand Theft Auto 3. Uh, yeah, 2000. So, um, you know, that was the year that the PS2 was released. I, I don't think this was a launch title. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it definitely came out before Grand Theft Auto 3. So very, very early PS2 game. Um, you can see kind of the seeds of Rockstar's open world formula in this one. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing about it. But uh, yeah, we're gonna pop this one in and check it out. Um, I think a lot of people have played this, so you can let me know what you think of Smuggler's Run. Um, I've played a little bit of it and I thought it was pretty fun. So we will check it out again. Oh, that's that's a good, that was a good Rockstar logo splash. Ooh yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I like that a lot. Every year, over $5 billion... Oh, I missed it. Huge profits are being made by ruthless smuggling gangs. This is where you come in. I am the smuggler. Oh, I like... <laughs> I like that they're doing the gameplay uh, spliced in with, like, FMV footage of off-road racing. That's so funny. 
Are you saying that people who off-road race are smuggling contraband in the United States? Is that what we're saying here? Because that's defamation, honestly. Yeah, I like this music. Um, I like just the, you know, the, the cover, you know, the, it's not a logo, but just like the, the, this person's face with the mask on and this, uh, typeface. That's cool. That's a cool look. I'm into it. Okay. So we got Smuggler's Mission. Compete to become a top dog in the very dangerous, dark, and illicit world of international smuggling in a series of missions. Um, that sounds cool. Uh, Turf War, Instant Action, Joy Riding, Pick a Car, Pick a Level, Buckle Up and Go for a Ride Anywhere. Um, we'll do the Smuggler's Mission, because that sounds like the, the mode that you want to play. Um, we're not going to save. I, I don't have that much memory card space, and I'm, I'm more in the mood to just mess around with this than play a ton of it. So, Okay, we have two options. We have the SUV or the buggy. Um, I think I like the SUV. I think that thing looks cool, so we'll do that. Uh, we'll do automatic. Okay, and we're off. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Do I, am I just driving through these checkpoints? Okay, we got a map. Uh, oh, shoot, whoops. Okay, I'm going, I, you know, I'm just running through these checkpoints. <laughs> okay, that was the whole mission. It was just right. Was just driving through those checkpoints. Cool. That's that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Not bad, baby. You can just about drive. Now let's see if you do some delivery work. All right, I'm gonna do some delivery work. Uh, we'll try the buggy this time. Switch it up a little bit. Nothing to worry about. All right. I'm interested in like how big these these maps are. Um, I might have to fire up that, uh, that joyride mode just to, just to, you know, see how, how vast this map is. I'm interested in that. All right. Contraband delivered. Go to our next pickup. Oh, okay. We got the contraband. It's kind of like a glorified crazy taxi a little bit, maybe. <laughs> am I am I wrong? I don't know. It's, it feels kind of similar to me. Oh, shoot. Okay. I think I might switch to a different mode. I, these missions are a little... A little too easy to start off with. All right, we'll do a turf war. And uh, we'll see what that's all about. Okay, we got Crooks and Smugglers, Loot Grab, um, Checkpoint Race. We'll try the, hmm, let's try Loot Grab. Okay, so we got a couple different, uh, hey, we got some snow. All right, we're doing the snow mode. Now we're talking. Now we got a couple different vehicles now, too. Um, I'm going to do the Massive Truck. And we'll do the Border Patrol. Uh... We got the CIA, the Army, uh, the O'Grady's. Man. Um, I'm going to be the CIA because I think that's funny. And you can pick a couple different vehicles for your teammates here. Um, sure. Alrighty. And we're off. Um, oh, no. Okay, I'm already doing a terrible job. I'm I'm really letting my team down here. This is this is bad. Okay. Oh, there's a. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of like tag, like you're. Oh man. So you want to like hit the dudes that have the contraband, and then you'll get the contraband, and then if they hit you, they'll get it back. Um, I think that's how what's going on here. But, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of just driving around. That's... Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Good lord almighty. Here we go. 
At least I'm driving a capable off-road vehicle. That's that's good. That is good and important. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm uh, this is a this is a poor display. I okay, my engine stalled. I'm just like going towards where the arrow's pointing, but I don't think uh. Oh, I got the contraband. Nope, nope. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes. I just ran that person over. They flew into the air, and uh, I'm surely they are dead now. There's no way they survived that. There's no, there's no way they survived that hit from the massive truck. The, the massive CIA truck just squashed them. Give me your contraband. Stop! It's the CIA! Hand over the contraband! Oh, we got a damage warning. Ugh. Do I still have... Okay, I, I think I still have the contraband. So, we're gonna roll on back to the, the drop-off point. No! Dude, I transferred it to my teammate. You need to get it... Okay, they, they got it. That's good. Okay, I think I'm starting to get a handle on this now. Um, it's pretty, it's fairly simple once you know what's going on. Um, okay, opponent got the contraband. I can see them driving with it. Oh, they, both opponents got it. That's not good. Come here. Come over here. Where are you going? This is the CIA. Pull over now. Give me your contraband. I need it. I need your contraband. Ah, that son of a gun. They are not. Uh, they're not listening to me. Even though I'm with the CIA, they they don't seem to care. They're just taking the contraband and keeping it for themselves. Okay. Well, we'll try again. Okay, opponent has it. Uh, let's see if we can intercept them with the massive truck. Oh, nope. That didn't work. They're just going to outrun me now. But not if we take this shortcut. We can we can cut through and now nah, they're going to get it. They're definitely going to get it. Okay. Well, this is, I mean, this is fun. I'm, I'm really bad at it. Um, but I, you know, I, I see what it's going for. Um, okay, we got the contraband. Yeah, something like this couldn't work, um, if it wasn't, like, a bigger open map, you know what I mean? Um, like, if this was just a linear racetrack, this would be super dumb. And, uh, this is the kind of thing where, you know, early, early in the PS2's lifespan, I'm sure this was super duper impressive, having these big open maps like this. Um... Another game I can think of that this kind of reminds me of is uh, MX versus ATV. Um, that game had some big open maps. I think this map is a little more detailed. There's a little more going on than those maps. Um, so that's cool. And yeah, you can kind of see the uh, the seeds of Grand Theft Auto 3 being planted here. There, I think there's a lot more to Grand Theft Auto 3 than what uh, this is doing. But you can see it. You, you know, you can see that the... They, the the technology is there already, right? It just needs to be refined a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's cool. I don't know how long this goes. Is this gonna... Okay, there's like another six and a half minutes left. Uh, I think we're gonna call it on that one. All right, well, I think we're gonna close things out here with uh, Legacy of Cain Defiance, which uh, I played a decent amount of this game, and I really like it. I think it's super fun, super well made, and yeah, I just felt like playing a little more of it today, so... Uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Another nice, complete copy. We love to see it. I'm not sure if this is the memory card with my save data or not, so we'll see. Okay, good. So we do have a save file. Thank you.
My tea's getting cold, but it's still good. It's still good tea. Boy, it's been a few months since I played this, um, so I don't remember much of how it works. All right, uh, I guess we'll go this way. Um, one thing that I really like about this game is that it runs at a buttery smooth 60 frames per second. We always love to see that here on Collector John. Um, especially for our older games, it's just great to see uh, older, like, 5th and 6th gen games running at smooth frame rates. Um, I think it always looks really good. I re realize you have to press R1 to steal these guys' souls, uh, and that's, like, the best way to kill them. So that's what I learned from the manual, and now we're doing that, and uh, it's pretty cool. I like doing it. You can do these air combos, which is fun, uh, very Devil May Cry-esque. Uh, Devil May Cry is awesome, one of my favorite PS2 games. And yeah, this is definitely like reminiscent of that type of game. Um, I think Devil May Cry, the, the combat's a little snappier, a little flashier. Um, I like that you get points based on like your how well you're doing, uh, which this doesn't seem to have, but I think this is still fun. Um, Oh yeah, that looks really nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that a lot. Um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, pretty good art direction in this game. Uh, definitely digging it. Okay, so it seems I'm fighting humans now, and not weird ghost things. Yes, yeah, so this is a series that I'm not uh, super familiar with. I remember um, when I was a kid, I would see the like the the cover for the PS1 game, uh, Soul Reaver, and I was like, "Dang, that looks that looks really cool." Um, but I did not have a PlayStation or a PlayStation 2 when I was a, a young kid, so. Uh, never really got around to playing any of these until I was just started messing around with this one. I'm sh I know that, you know, I don't know where this one is in the series and like the timeline. It's probably not the best one to play first, but um, I found a copy of it for a good price and I was like, eh, I'll just, I'll get that and check it out. And I really enjoyed what I uh, played of it, so I've been wanting to uh, mess with it again. I, now I can't see because the... <laughs> Now the camera's giving me problems, uh, but that's that's fine. If you're familiar with the series, uh, let me know in the comments what uh, like what game from the series do you think is like the one that people should play. If they're just gonna play one, you know what I mean? Because I also I do I do have a copy of Soul Reaver, uh, which I haven't played yet. Um, I also have Soul Reaver Two on the PS2. Um, I haven't played either of those yet. This is the only one that I've actually played. Um, but all of these games seem pretty cool, so... Oh, that's fun. Just like, you know, fun kind of character action games with some platforming thrown in. Uh, it's good stuff. I, I like it. Uh, yeah, this game uh, it runs at mostly a somewhat solid 60 frames per second. Um, I'd say it's running at 60 frames, like, maybe 75% of the time, and then the rest of the time, if there's a lot going on, it, it gets down a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I just think it looks, it looks really cool to see games with, um, lower fidelity graphics running at a high frame rate. Um, I, I'm really into that. I, I, yeah, I just like the look of it a lot. All right. Uh, I have no idea where I'm going right now. I'm just kind of wandering around aimlessly, slashing dudes. Dudes and ladies. I think there's some ladies that I'm also slashing. Um, I don't remember what was going on in the story. I, I feel like the story in these games is probably pretty cool, but... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a casual... <laughs> I'm a casual Legacy of Kane uh, fan, so... I don't really know what's going on with the story. But yeah, this is, uh, this is a fun game. And, uh, 
I think that's probably going to do it for me for this video. Um, you know, I just wanted to hang out with you guys for a little bit and mess around with a few games. And uh, yeah, I feel like we did do that. And now I need to, I have some other stuff that I need to work on today. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Um, let me know what you think of this format where I'm just like messing around and playing a few games. Because, um, you know, it, it's different than what I usually do. I'm usually out there collecting stuff and then sometimes I'll play my pickups. But for this one, you know, since we're stuck inside today, I was just like, eh, let's just play a few games and, and you know, and talk and mess around a little bit. But yeah, I would encourage you guys to uh, play some video games. <laughs> um, if you collect games, just like go and find a few games that you have in your collection that you haven't spent a lot of time with and just, um, just play a few of them, you know? It's really fun. Collecting games is fun, but playing them is just as fun, if not more fun. So yeah, play your video games. It's a, it's a great time. I guarantee you'll have a great time playing those video games. But yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this has been Collector John, and I appreciate you hanging with me, watching my videos. Um, all the support that you guys are giving me has been like really, really heartening to see. Um, I'm really glad that I can make these videos and anyone cares at all. I think that's super awesome. So yeah, if you like videos about game collecting or just playing retro games, definitely give me a like or subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. I have some videos on my channel that I'm super proud of that I think you'll probably like if you're into game collecting. So check it out. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.